Hi, my name is James, and today on Quirky Economics, I'm going to be explaining what a stakeholder is. So, I'm going to start off by getting a formal definition out of the way. So, groups or individuals that are affected by or have uh, some sort of interest in the operations of a business are called stakeholders. Basically, the term stakeholder refers to any person or group of people that affect or are affected by the business. So these effects could be positive or negative. So for example a supply could have a positive effect on a business if it lowers how much it charges the business for its materials. At the same time the government could have a negative effect if it increased corporation tax therefore the business is going to have much higher costs. A business could uh, positively impact employees if it had high wages and good working conditions but at the same time it could negatively impact other business by sort of taking away customers if it increased the competition in the market so let's look at three different types of stakeholders we can have first of all we've got internal stakeholders and these are people that are directly within the business so this could be uh, this could be employees, managers, the CEO, or possibly a sole trader who owns his own business, and so on. A biz like I said, businesses can provide good working conditions or high wages, but at the same time, they could have poor working conditions, which obviously employees aren't going to be very happy about. Um, workers can also obviously have a very big impact on the business itself. So. Uh, our receptionist uh, down here at the bottom, they could give off a really good or a really bad impression to potential consumers, customers, or business partners. Our employees, uh, yeah, employees, sorry, could be highly motivated and therefore have high productivity. They could also slack off, and if they were in customer service, this could be really bad for our brand image, obviously. Next, we have our external stakeholders. And these are people outside of the business who are often indirectly affected by our business. So let's look at the example of a local community. People might be really annoyed at our new supermarket. This could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe they pollute a lot. Maybe they keep their lights on really late at night, which keeps people up. Or they could just have really loud... They could make things really noisy, especially if there's lots of people driving there late at night. Alternatively, the local community might be really pleased with the arrival of our new large business because it could raise large sums of money for local charities. It could also somehow benefit the local community in some other way. This could be a wide range of things. It could be building a park for children or funding new equipment for a school. Obviously, our local community is going to be happy about this. A group of stakeholders who are likely to have not so good negative impact on our business are pressure groups. Hopefully you've uh, heard of pressure groups before. They're basically groups of people who are going to protest or do some sort of other action that is going to change people's decisions or cause something to happen. So this could, they could, pro like I said, they could protest and give bad publicity to a business. This could in turn reduce their sales. They may start some sort of campaign which aims to raise awareness of some sort of issue that perhaps a business causes some sort of negative impact on. Again, this, uh, the business might have to, let's say, uh, have more recycle, easier to recycle packaging. This is going to be likely more expensive to manufacture so that we can uh, appeal to ethically minded customers who have been made aware of this new issue. This is, like I said, this is going to increase our costs, so this isn't so good for us. <clears throat> our last category are connected stakeholders. So these are again external to the business, but they're in some way directly connected to the business. So let's look at customers. Here we have our happy customer who's uh, happy because all the products are cheap. They're good value for money. Because of this, he might spend a lot of his money there buying a lot of products. So obviously this is good for the customer and the business. On the other hand, here in red, we have our sad customer. He's not happy because the customer service is really bad. He then goes and tells his friends about this. 
So obviously our customers had a negative experience and he's given us uh, bad publicity, bad recommendations. Obviously this isn't good for our brand image. On the other side of things, we have our suppliers. Uh, they obviously, yeah, obviously supply our business, so they can sort of, they have some sort of choice in how much they charge and how much time they give us to pay. If they give us a lot of trade, yeah, sorry, trade credit, then obviously this is good for our business, especially if we're having problems with cash flow in the short term. Alternatively, they could charge really high prices, which obviously isn't so good for us, especially, like I said, if we're having problems with cash flow. Um... At the same time, we could positively impact the supplier. If we always pay them on time, then they're going to be quite happy. But if we always pay them late, then they're not going to be so happy. They're going to be disappointed, might get frustrated. They might raise their prices or insist on stricter terms in the future. So a really useful way of looking at stakeholders is something called a stakeholder analysis matrix. I'll let you look at it for a second, but it's basically just a fancy name for a table looking at stakeholders. It's really useful for looking at projects. So we're going to look at uh, building some sort of sports stadium or sports sort of area in a local university campus. And our stakeholder we're going to look at is the local community again, people who live nearby. So our stakeholder is our local community sorry about the shaking of the table um and why have they got an interest in this project well we're going to have lots of traffic maybe if uh we have a lot more popularity people visiting the area during the construction there's going to be lots of lorries perhaps they have to put up roadblocks um they also once it's finished they can go and watch the game if they want so they've got a new facility uh, what else is there? We've also got perhaps noise and light pollution, like with the like with the supermarket we had earlier. So yeah, they might we might be building really late at night, and we've got a family, and they've got a baby, and the baby's crying because of the noise. This isn't so good. So we can look at the actual impact we're having on the, uh, our stakeholder, and the impact they're having on us. So which, this, is, this is quite crude, but we've got on us, on them. So we can divide this into four quadrants, quadrants, or sort of areas or sectors. So we're going to put our local community up here because they're going to have quite a big effect on us. Because what if they if they might complain a lot to the local council, say, "Oh, my baby won't be able to sleep. There's going to be too much traffic," and give a lot of good reasons why this shouldn't why it shouldn't be built. And this could have this could affect whether or not we get planning permission. Like I said, we're also going to have a lot of impact on them. We're going to cause traffic, pollution. Um, again, we're going to give them a new facility. That's also an impact. It's a positive impact. But since we're having a lot of uh, negative effects on them, we might want to mitigate this. We want, might want to make them happy. So this is kind of what we could do to reduce our impact, how to mitigate it. So we might do something like give them a free ticket. Uh, we could do this, say, every month. So every month, so every month, give them a free ticket every month to a game of their cho choosing. You can come along, watch a game every month. Hopefully, this should keep you happy. You're getting a free game out of this, and everyone's happy. You're not complaining. So this can be really useful when we're doing projects, but at the same time, we can look at things in the long run. We might look at our customers' interest. Obviously, they're buying products from us, and we're going to have a big impact on them if we're quite a big company and we're dictating prices. Perhaps if we're a monopoly, that if we raise our prices, they have to pay more. At the same time, they're the ones buying from us. We're kind of dependent on them totally. So they've got a big impact on us. Uh... We probably wouldn't use the word mitigation, but perhaps just how could we make them happy so they're more likely to buy from us. But mainly we want to use this for projects, but I want to bring it up because it's it can be really use, it can be a really useful tool when looking at stakeholders. Um, so let's look at a case study. 
of a business that's done a really good job of satisficing, which is basically pleasing all of its stakeholders. We're going to look at Cadbury, Cadbury's chocolate. So Cadbury conduct a lot of market research. This allows them to more effectively meet customer needs, and this ultimately leads to more sales. Obviously this is good because customers, they're more willing to pay, they want to buy our products, and we get more money from it, we get more profit because we've got more brand loyalty and repeat purchases. From this example, we can see how pleasing stakeholders often has a benefit on us, the business, as well as the stakeholder we're pleasing. They also regularly consult with employees and have been doing so for a number of years. And this really helps to boost staff morale and therefore productivity as well as, well as building up um, a good rep reputation, which Cadbury is quite popular for. Cadbury also has approximately 60,000 shareholders and all of them are invited to an annual general meeting. At this meeting, they can vote on various decisions that the business is going to go ahead with, and they can also ask questions. And this is beneficial because the owners, the actual shareholders, they can, they're making the decisions. They're better informed and know more about the market because they're able to ask about it. This hopefully means that better decisions are going to be made in which direction this business is going to go and strategies it's going to adopt. Cadbury also has approximately 40,000 different suppliers. Cadbury's try to act ethically and they evaluate each supplier and they do this looking at factors such as price, quality and how ethical our source is. Again, this helps to build a good reputation which Cadbury is popular for and it helps attract ethically minded consumers. Another group they regularly uh, converse with are the World Health Organization. Given that they sell chocolate, which is quite a fat, sugary product, they don't want to be put in the spotlight accused of selling food that's really bad for us, because obviously this isn't going to do very well for sales or brand image. And I'm going to finish off with one final key term, which is an economic agent. This is a person, business or organisation that somehow influences the economy by producing, buying or selling products or services and or paying taxes. For example, let's look at an average person who helps to produce or sell goods or services. They may even provide them directly if they're working in the tertiary sector. So they're going to be most likely paying tax, income tax if they're working. So yeah, they're, they're kind of doing all three. They're producing, buying, and possibly selling products and paying tax, hopefully. I wanted to include this because it's, although it's a bit of a tangent, it's not really relevant in any way to any other topic, but it's almost as if, as if they're stakeholders in the economy as a whole. They're impacting on it and being impacted by it. But anyway, thanks for watching this episode of Quick Economics. It's been a long one, but please let me know if you've preferred this style or if you'd like me to go back to just doing three, four minute long videos on economics. But anyway, I hope you've still enjoyed it. And if you have, please leave a comment, share, like, subscribe, anything you feel like. And hopefully I'll go into a bit more detail and cover slightly more content in more in later videos if I do longer ones like this. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.